Next, we're going to start talking about fractions and mixed numbers. Hang in there. I know this is not going to be your favorite topic, but we do need to get a working knowledge of fractions because we use fractions so much in algebra. So let's talk about the different parts of a fraction. The numerator is the top number. In this number example I've got, it would be the number 3. Right here is our numerator. The denominator is the bottom number. In this example, it's the number 4 right here. So the numerator is the top, but the denominator is the bottom. Remember that fractions are also division problems, so this is also 3 divided by 4. Now a proper fraction has a smaller numerator. In other words, the numerator is smaller than the denominator, okay? An improper fraction has an equal or bigger numerator, okay? If the numerator is, I'll just put num, if the numerator is the same as the denominator, like in 4 over 4, then it's improper. But if the numerator is bigger than the denominator, as in 5 over 4 or 5 fourths, it's also improper. So either one of those makes an improper fraction. Proper fraction, smaller numerator, improper fraction, equal or bigger numerator. Now, if we want to simplify fractions, we usually do it, we can do it by dividing. Example number one has negative 3 over negative 3. Well, you know when you divide anything by itself, it's positive 1. Both of them negative divided by negative, two negatives, even number of negatives, is going to make a positive. Example two is a negative five divided by one. Well, one negative is going to make a negative answer. The answer is going to be negative five. And number three is going to be zero divided by eight. Is it okay to do that? Yes, it is. So the answer is zero. And number four is five divided by zero. Is this okay? Well, the answer would be no, this is not okay. Remember, you're putting the letter O next to the zero and you're forming the word okay or no. If you form the word no, this is undefined. Now we want to look at some uh, mixed numbers, which are whole numbers with fractions, and we want to change them into improper fractions because we have to do that in order to do some of the algebra we're going to do. The operations you'll need to do are to add and, and um, I mean, sorry, multiply and then add. If you'll just remember that, I'm going to draw a circle here. I'm going to say the whole number times the denominator plus the numerator. That's going to give me my new numerator. In other words, I'm going to say 2 times 3 plus 1. Well, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 gives me a 7. Where do I put it? Well, I put it as the numerator. What do I use as the denominator? The denominator never changes. Whatever the denominator of that fraction is, that's what it is. Now, I would simplify it if I needed to, but I don't need to. So the answer, 2 and 1 third, is really 7 thirds. Let's do the same thing with example number 6. I'm going to remember, if you want to draw this circle and put multiplication, addition here, you can. I'm going to say 7 times 8 plus 3 is going to be my numerator. 7 times 8 is 56 plus 3 is 59. What's my denominator? Remember, the denominator does not change. Whatever it was in the fraction, it stays. 59 over 8 is my converted fraction, improper fraction. So now what happens if you have an improper fraction, though, and you want to get it back to a mixed number? Well, then you have to divide. Let's try that. This is an example 7 is 13 divided by 7, or 13 sevenths. I would say 13 divided by 7. How many times will 7 go into 13? Well, just once, and then I will subtract it, and I'll have 6 left over. I write the 6 as the numerator of my remainder over the same denominator. Look, the denominator, once again, doesn't change. The answer is 1 and 6 sevenths. Let's do it again for number 8. 17 divided by 5. Remember, when you're setting up the problem, read the fraction from the top to the bottom. 17 divided by 5. So 5 goes into 17 3 times. 3 times 5 is 15. I subtract and I have 2 left over. That becomes the numerator. The denominator, of course, is the same denominator. It's what I divide it by, isn't it? 5. 3 and 2 fifths. Now take a look at number 9. This one, 15 divided by 5, you might be able to do in your head. Well, 15 divided by 5 does not have a remainder. So I ended up with a whole number with this one, which is perfectly okay.